Hindenburg, the rise and fall of the great airships. Shortly after World War I, the Hindenburg became a major symbol of modern aviation and air travel worldwide. It was the largest and most advanced airship of the day, and a sign of transoceanic airship travel's great future. However, the future of the modern airship ended with a tragedy so terrible, it finished the airship industry abruptly and completely. At the turn of the last century, the dream of human flight was just becoming possible for more than just the odd hobbyist or daredevil. An explosion of innovation was occurring throughout much of the world. In Italy, Poland, Germany, England, France, Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, Austria, and the U.S. Introducing the exciting new era of air travel. In 1783, the first balloon flight, demonstrated by the Montgolfier brothers, sent a sheep, a duck, and a rooster around 5,000 feet into the air in Versailles, France. In 1852, French innovator Henry Gifford created the first dirigible or steerable balloon. Then, in 1900, Ferdinand von Zeppelin came up with the idea of Zeppelins because of his desire to float with purpose. From the early 1800s until after World War I, Germany had the largest economy in Europe and had become the powerhouse of industrialized Europe. The biggest contribution to air travel at the time was airships. Zeppelins improved the simple design of the hot air balloon by giving it a strong aluminum frame. This aerodynamic design enabled gains in size and maneuverability. Germany became the world leader producing the largest and most luxurious aircraft ever seen. Made by Luftschiff Bau and operated by D-Lag Corp, which stands for Deutsches Luftschifffahrts Aktien Gesellschaft Corporation. Since 1909, D-Lag made up the world's first commercial airline. D-Lag was founded in 1909 and Luftschiff Bau started in Frankfurt, Germany. These aircraft became very luxurious. Some even dubbed them Hotels in the Sky. In the early 1900s, airships were being made for World War I in Germany. Towards the 1930s, airships were well known to everyone, especially Germans. However, Germany lost the war, and the Treaty of Versailles passed in 1919 right after the war shuttered dirigible and war-related airship manufacturing plants in Germany. Then, in 1925, seven treaties passed in Locarno, Switzerland, ended these harsh terms. Despite these tough times for Germany, they still made two notable airships, the Graf Count Zeppelin, LZ-127, the first commercial airline, and the largest aircraft to date, the Hindenburg, LZ-129. The Hindenburg, named after Paul von Hindenburg, who was president of Germany from 1925 until his death in 1934. Construction on the Hindenburg started in 1931. Work on the Hindenburg ended in 1934. It had its maiden voyage in 1936. The Hindenburg became a symbol of German pride. Despite Germany suffering economic hardship after losing World War I, this magnificent airship showed the world that Germany was doing just fine and promoted the image of the Nazis as unstoppable. This propaganda belied the truth. After the war, Germany was extremely poor. Very few Germans could even afford to set foot on one of their own airships. It used hydrogen for fuel. It was originally designed to run on helium, but because the U.S. was the only producer of helium, and because they were on bad terms with the Germans, the Germans didn't get the helium they preferred. Hydrogen is flammable, unlike helium. If the airship had used helium, it would be heavier, but it would never burn. The gas bags and the outer layer of the ship were made of gold beater's skin. Ox intestines lined in a thin layer of gold, valued for its strength against tearing. This material does not collect static electricity. The Hindenburg had made 17 successful flights across the Atlantic in the previous year. However, the first Atlantic crossing flight of 1937 would be its last. The Hindenburg left from Frankfurt, Germany 
on May 3, 1937, with 36 wealthy German tourists, fully expecting to get their money's worth. It was to be a normal flight across the Atlantic, with quite a few stops in beautiful scenery. On May 6, 1937, the Hindenburg was arriving at its destination in Lakehurst, New Jersey, when disaster struck. The day is May 6, 1937, Lakehurst, New Jersey. The people on the ground are excited to see the airship come into view, patiently waiting after storms had delayed the grand ship by six hours. It is still the largest aircraft built to date. People were excited to see it land. Friends and family were gathered. Among these men and women was Herbert Morrison, a broadcaster whose broadcast for this day that the whole world heard will soon become infamous. Then there was a little, barely visible, flash. An unknown flame of some kind sparked the Hindenburg. Some say it was static electricity, but we now know that not to be true since the skin does not collect static electricity. As the hydrogen's normally colorless flame burned, the iron-doped skin gave the flame a bright orange and red color. People quickly grew horrified as a tiny flame grew into an incredible inferno. The airship then shot up into the air, causing screams from everyone on the ground as they rushed to safety, not knowing whether their friends or family on board would make it out alive. The red and orange flame started to diminish the Hindenburg to a wilted frame and otherwise smoking wreckage in only 32 seconds. There were 97 people on board the Hindenburg that day, including 61 crew members. In all, 36 people died, 22 crew, 13 passengers, and one man on the ground. The Nazis immediately guessed sabotage because of the lingering distrust between America and Germany after World War I, but that soon proved not to be the case due to an investigation after the crash of the Hindenburg. What caused the catastrophe? The world might never know for sure. It was a stormy day. Perhaps the unknown spark that ignited the Hindenburg's fuel was created by St. Elmo's fire. St. Elmo's fire is a rare plasma discharge phenomenon during thunderstorms. It shows as a bright blue or a violet glow with an audible quick snapping sound. What is certain is that the Hindenburg went up in flames because of its flammable fuel, hydrogen. What follows is a clip of the actual moment of disaster. The heart-wrenching reaction to the crash of history's greatest airship that brought the entire industry down with it. I'll let the broadcaster Herbert Morrison take it from here. It's starting to rain again. It's, the rain had uh, cracked up a little bit. They backed motors of the ship are just holding it uh, just enough to keep it from... It burst into flames. Get it started. Get it started. It's flying and it's rising. It's rising terrible. Oh, my. Get out of the way, please. It's burning and bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast. And all the folks between us, this is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's just it's, it's, it's like 20, oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky. And it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now. And the flame is rising to the ground. Not quite to the morning mass. All the humanity and all the fans are just speeding around it. I told you... <laughs> I can't even talk to people. His friends are out there. It's a, it's, it's a, oh. I, I can't talk, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, it's just laying there, massive smoking wreckage. And everybody can hardly breathe and talk and screaming. Lady, I, I, I'm sorry. Honestly, I, I can hardly breathe. I, I'm going to step inside while I cannot see it. <laughs> Charlie, that's terrible. I, I, I can't. I, listen, folks, I, I'm going to have to stop for a minute because I've lost the voice. This is the worst thing I've ever witnessed. The world was devastated. The Hindenburg was the grandest airship ever built by the world leader in airship construction. The worldwide broadcast had lasting effects. Even though the Zeppelin company tried to recover customers' confidence in airship safety the following year with the helium-filled Graf Zeppelin II, or LZ-130, the public was unable to shake the image of the burning Hindenburg. And with the airplane's rising popularity, it wasn't long before the airships all but died off.